Hello, and welcome to the Foundry Roundtable, the only podcast dedicated to the Foundry for Star Trek Online. I'm your new glorious overlord, uh, Duncan Idaho 11. With me tonight are my Minister of Propaganda, Green Green Dragoon, Minister of War, Mark Hawkman, and Minister of Ministries, uh, Drogon1701, who is having slight connection issues tonight, so I'm doing the intro. Tonight's episode is 181, and we're doing the show now. So... How's it going, dun, guys? Dun, dun. Help dun, dun. prison to me. <laughs> Quiet, you. So, yep. So, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we've got a lot to do tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm actually uploading things at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, part of the plan. Plan Omega. Yeah, this, so, this is the backup plan after the uh, original plan <laughs> failed. <laughs> what? I mean, come on. We, we have to invade Portugal at some point. Well, I mean. It wouldn't be no. helped if it didn't go well. Come now, we're failing plans at twice the efficiency that we used to. <laughs> this is true. This is like what happens when I play Risk. <laughs> well, yeah, except, you know, yeah, since Baz is here, yeah, Australia is just going to, you know, conquer everyone because they're just going to set up the whole game, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, and then all of a sudden uh, Asia is theirs. Well, see, see, this is part of the reason why I like Risk 2210 is because in Risk 2210, you can just simply nuke Australia into irrelevance. That's a great way to start the foundation tonight. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, so yeah, we're here on Earth Space Dock for the moment. Especially because um, there was ballistic missile scare earlier today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're typically not on the nose like this. Um but yeah, tonight we are uh, going to take a look in the Foundry for our 26th Century Anthology mission. Um, the introduction to our latest challenge, which is now out and rolling. Yep, that uh, post went up. And uh, if you uh, haven't seen it already, we will be including it in the show notes. Yep, uh, authors are tasked of making a mission for the anthology we've been uh, uh, um, talking about for some time now. Um, with the prompt that it's basically first assignment, go out there, go explore, go do something relevant to setting out into the Centaurus A galaxy. So, yeah. But don't find Earth yet. Yeah, don't find Earth yet. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully that'll be, you know, quite an interesting one. Because it, it's, yeah, it's just this, it's a di- very different different setting and i'm still having a little trouble sort of getting started with some of the minor dialogue but it 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 should be a fun one well i mean especially since you uh aren't um officially uh, participating in the uh, contest uh it might be interesting to kind of uh discuss yeah because for me it's just I'm trying to make it just one big glorious project, kind of like sort of a one, like one of my few one-off missions. Except now it's an SSF mission, but it's sort of I'm trying to encapsulate my style of building in one episode. So yeah, doing that well, especially with a revamped plot, but a lot of long-established assets and story ideas, it's it's a tricky one. I know if, you know for a lot of authors, it's going to be a little bit <laughs> let's just say a little bit simpler. Um, then trying to wrangle everything together, like established characters in SSF transitioning into this time frame, having them get up to something, but at the same time, having it be relatable to people who haven't played my missions before, because this is going to be my, um, second attempt at making a dedicated KDF mission. So, um, yeah. Yay, KDF. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be one for Dragon to play. <laughs> That'd be kind of interesting because... Um, while it's it's all the alliances involved, it's the prompt is kind of a federation issue, so it's kind of looking at it from the perspective of uh, this other power that is wasn't directly affected by the crisis, but is lending aid. So how do they view it? Yeah, and that's that's why I'm really liking the KDF um, sort of Romulan vibe, especially starting off because my first set map is the Enterprise J, so. I'm going to be like, there's one little uh, bit for the um, intro I still got to build on that map, which is a decontamination bay that you start off in. Just kind of set the tone a little bit for the Federation. You know, the Romulans and the Klingons are, you know, going out on a limb for the Federation here, and still the Federation is being the Federation. Just a little too squeaky clean and being a little irritating. So, um, 
<laughs> yeah, it should be good. Good way to get started. Um, but yeah, just kind of like those little things are, you know, what I'm trying to work on right now. Because that's kind of like where a lot of mission for me is going to live is just those smaller points along with the bigger story. Because the bigger story for me is more or less in place, but it's just the implementation. Now, we threw a lot of a lot of uh, zany ideas around as far as uh, what the Romulans and the Klingons were like in the I've got uh, 26th a nanoff. century. <laughs> There's a Nanoff um, with a Romulan party. So um, I, I'm keeping up with them kind of being around. I didn't like I haven't written any dialogue explaining them. Um, but I, I kind of like the Klingons as being almost like in a Renaissance period. And then the okay. Romulans being more sort of one with nature. I was I was kind of my first thought for Romulans was basically to uh, like play off of the idea that the uh, Romulans and Vulcans by intermingling with each other, both cultures were kind of like became more like the other than they were previously. Yeah, that's kind of that's one way to think about it. Kind of like the Romulan so, Republic so at this point you, is. You, you now have Romulans who, while they may not, you know, tr- try to uh, uh, be, like, perfectly logical like Spock, they still, you know, respect the teachings of Sirach and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, the one thing I'll add to that is that the Romulans in this time, it's been, you know, quite a while, um, especially with the more open Republic, we've been interacting with a lot of other people, too. So I'm trying to, like, not just play it off as a duality between them and the Vulcans, even though that's going to be a factor, but them being a lot more open, a little bit more sort of keen mm-hmm. on science and um, research, almost kind of like more academic than the Federation, which is a little bit more militaristic. Hmm. Interesting. Because I, mean, I always kind of saw uh, for, for all of Romulans, these crews, ev- ev- even in the past, as being the whole like taking the basically like the work smarter, not harder approach to most things. So they would have, I would have expected them to uh, do a lot of scientific research, uh, anyways. Yeah, this would be basically you've got unit like almost like university types as major Vulcan or major Romulan officers. That's kind of how I'm thinking about just the writing is and just mm-hmm. how to play that off. There's the Federation. Um, the characters I'm working with so far are very much more military officers with the um, Klingons coming in a little bit more as uh, not pretentious, but I mean, more civic. So that's kind of the way I'm thinking about the factions at this time in that alliance where they're almost mm-hmm. becoming specialized elements of one society. We're pro- well, like a heightening of like their more ritualistic side, more their artistic um, side. Artistic side rather than ritualistic. So they're less ritualistic, but more into the sort of the idea and style. So they're playing up much more the sort of philosopher um, rather than the, the working academic. Maybe it's mm. the influence of Vulcan mysticism. Oh, or, or the Jorans. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Klingons. I like. It's like a. For me, I've been thinking about them as sort of like re-examining what it means to be Klingon, but in a different light than just let's go stab things with bat lats. That's Actually, still there too. No, 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 now that I think about that harder, uh, the idea that uh, Klingons who have lived around Bajorans would um, really like think hard about the way that the uh, Bajorans revere the prophets that makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, it's a little bit different with Klingons because uh, they're not so much worshiping of a god. They're, it's more worship of a set of personal values. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Killed their gods, remember? <laughs> yeah. So what I'm thinking is, for them, they're reinterpreting those values, trying to still hold on to them, but now it's just forming different, like more sophisticated expression. Well, see, because well, one of the things with, what I've noticed uh, with some cases is that the Klingons would sometimes kind of like they uh, run into a problem and and they're like, oh, well, we don't really feel like uh, worrying about this, so we'll just blow it up and then forget about it. Yeah. I, I'm thinking that they kind of moved on from that to kind of like moving on from gothic in a barbarian sense, but gothic in an artistic sense. Mm-hmm. Buttresses. Buttresses everywhere. Yes. <laughs> so many buttresses. I want I want to do that. I mean, I don't have a map to do that. Like an ex, like an exterior, like 
I, I was kind of thinking about if I do a sequel, maybe something set on the Dorgath mm. in a noir style, and that would have a noir style plot, but with lots of buttresses and that style of society. So a really, you know, fascinating. We do have some objects that are good for that. <laughs> exactly, too. It's just like, it's kind of perfect, but I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself here. I got to build one mission first. Kind of set everything up. And I've got a lot established for this one already. So, And it would work out pretty well to do sort of more of a first contact uh, type mission just to set up a lot of connecting elements for other authors to potentially use for later missions in the anthology. Like new factions, um, developments with some of the characters. Since I will be using some that appeared in the, uh, or I volunteered for the um, crew roster, but I might be making significant changes to one through my mission. But should well, be the characters are there to be used or not, <laughs> as people would like. Yep, although, you know, if, say, Heathen Dog is listening, decides that he's just going to create a 26th century mission that kills Jagoro off, I'm probably not going to, you know, introduce that as canon to SSF. Alt- alternate timeline. <laughs> that that, uh, uh, m- m- much like uh, Days of Future Past, uh, you-, you must uh, send a t- uh, brave soul into the past in order to correct. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be, uh, I, uh, I kind of want him to do the Fendry now because it might be like a dueling, like, you know, a series of temporal incursions. Yes. Time ends up style with Jagoros and Rosses all fighting each other. <laughs> uh, universe comes to an end, then we rebuild it, then it just destroyed again. Now, uh, that, that kind of gets me to thinking about something as, uh, our pilot episode, uh, I mean, I'd mostly written it with uh, Starfleet in mind, but I'm now wondering if we can, whether we'll need to make uh, any adjustments for, like, uh, One thing that Romulans would be utterly Klingons. hilarious is having NPCs where um, they address you as uh, Starfleet officers because at their point in time, the Klingons and Romulans are part of Starfleet, etc. And you have the option to correct them, to tell them, hey, wait, I'm not part of the Federation yet. <laughs> I think we established that they are not, are still technically separate at the time oh. of the 26th. They do eventually yeah, kind we of become they not part yet. of the Federation. Oh, right, right, right. It's the 31st century where they're like that. Never mind then, yeah. Um. But, I mean, it, it is something that we should keep in mind. I mean, obviously, the mission we'll be putting out at first will be for the Fed side. But it could be that we have Romulans playing through. I don't think there's anything in our plot that really precludes Romulans. It's not like no. we're doing, like, Fed and interiors. just be around helping like out, yeah. Yeah. Because, oh, I mean, they're sending, they're sending the Vulcus. So, I mean, we've already written in that they're included. included. It's just that we'd probably yeah. encourage authors to include Romulan dialogue options where appropriate. Yeah. Um, when was the last time they, uh, wait, they removed this uh, mission when they revamped the Romulan story arc. Why did they update the graphics on the consoles at the same time? Uh, I was just looking around the interior of that, that one Herogen ship, where it has on a console a display of the inside of that wormhole where you have to fight the Herogen in that one mission that they erased. And this is a full-color display, which makes me think it's something relatively new, even though the mission that it used to be part of is gone. Weird. Probably say right now that Mark's in the foundry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's possible they use the asset itself somewhere else. Well, see, because th- these are very specific, though, because uh, as someone who uh, set a mission where you have to fight Orions inside that wormhole... I immediately recognize what each of these uh, images is actually showing you from the inside of the wormhole. Hmm. Weird. Oh, well. Oh, uh, yeah, that's another thing that would be nice to have as a uh, foundry asset is because these consoles that I'm looking at are very distinctly herogen. 
the only ones I've ever seen in the game that actually have Hirogen iconography on them. And that's part of the reason why I think it's something new, is because I don't remember at release having any her uh, consoles with like actual Hirogen images on them. Hmm. Oh well. Isn't there a mission, like a newer event mission, where you board a Hirogen ship? Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, it's in Delta Rising. Or, yeah, it's um, when we team up with the Vodwar to infiltrate the Vodwar. Okay. And yeah. if part of that takes place inside a Hirogen ship? Yeah, it's yep. mostly the bridge. We have to come in, yeah, we have to come near hmm. their control console for some reason. Oh, so so maybe the assets got uh, re retouched because of that, and then it bled through into the foundry in a weird way. Yeah, because hmm. um, yeah, our assets are linked back to the same ones in... Uh, well, I mean, the game. this is one of those things where uh, Taco mentioned that uh, updating these uh, flat panel displays on consoles is as simple as going into the game code and telling it to use a new image file. It's just that you first need to create the image file, make sure the image file fits, and assorted other things. Then you, you tweak the uh, game code to uh, say, okay, this is the file you're going to display on that console now. Well, well actually, I'll say, wait, I, I explained that wrong. You don't need to tell it, uh, you don't need to give it a different file name, you just replace the file with an updated version of the file. So that all, uh, uh, all assets in game that used to use that file will now use the new version of the file, even if you don't remember what they are. <laughs> I think Taco actually mentions that was a problem in some and cases. Sometimes where unintentionally. Some things were using things that he didn't really know were using things, and then when he changed things, other things changed, and he's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that happens mm. surprisingly frequently. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess I should go probably hop into the foundry. Hmm. At any rate... Uh, that is yet another thing to throw into the list of things that would be awesome to have as placeable assets. Obviously, this particular map I am running around in at the moment has them baked in, but they're the only thing I know of in the Foundry that has them as an asset, so, you know. Also, those spiked walls decorated with skulls. So many skulls. But, um, do we have that as a placeable asset? I don't remember. Yeah. We do? Mm. Yep, we've got the spikes. And yeah. some variants of the spike walls that do have skulls. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, because I'm looking at that, and, and I'm looking at this. That there's a few variants of that, one of which has part of a rib cage stuck to the spikes, one of which has two human skulls impaled on the same spike, and there's like three or four variants that have neither. Yeah, there we've got a few variations thereof, so you can take a look at those in the detail object list. The, the this ship here, there's, I mean, this one room I'm in right now has at least four variations of the walls with spikes. Maybe I think we've more. got four in total, but it's between larger panels and then small rows. So we probably don't have every single possible variation, but they also could be randomized too. So we actually might. Well, see, one thing I noticed with this is that there's one place in here where you see one that looks distinctly different from the rest. Then when you look at it a second or third or fourth time, you realize it's actually upside down, and that's why it looks different. Because <laughs> there is one room where you see three of the spike panels on one wall, and if you look closely, you'll notice that two of them are exactly the same. Uh, do we want to do any screen sharing uh, from my end? What you working on? Um, 26th Century Project. So I'll just be going in the foundry here uh, simultaneously in case... Um... Actually, I am not going to be able to do that right now. Okie dokie. There's, there's a bug in OBS that's uh, got window capture broken. Mm, uh, no boy, no. Yeah, it sucks. I was wondering what was up with that. I tried playing around with OBS recently, and yeah, it was not behaving as it should with window yep. capture. I have to use game capture to capture Stowe. 
The, oh, the, this is amusing. I just realized something in this room is that there's two of them where the actual configuration of the panel is the same. It's just that in one case, it's actually mounted higher on the wall than the other, which is something we could totally do in the foundry with, uh, by moving assets just a little bit. Yes, yeah, the main room in this map, if you stand in the middle of it, you can just like spin around and see seven different variations of the spiked wall panels. Or, well, correction, seven uh, instances where the spiked wall panels are used, and I'm not quite 100% sure how many variations there are yet. All right, so I was thinking for... Uh, actually, a better place to start would be to kind of pick up where... Uh, Do we want to build this on the empty map uh, for the interior? Yeah, but I was thinking I might load up the uh, map that has us in uh, Earth's orbit. So we That's can kind guilty. of... Having to go. I haven't been in this file in a while, so I'm having to re-remember where I left everything. Mm. I don't think we've worked on it since before, before the downtime. downtime. Many moons ago, there was tell of a project okay. called the 26th Century Intro Mission. Back back in the year, a tale of a <laughs> What we have is these stations, which are one of the the typical station props that we uh, have in the foundry. But we are, in this case, we're using them as shield generators that are going to uh, basically be what protects Earth and ultimately what causes it to be thrown into subspace. Mm -hmm. We kind of established that we're like just outside of. Uh, the moon's orbit. So we got the moon actually very close here. And uh, so we some need... verticality, uh, like I'm just thinking about how to sort of translate the design into an interior dedicated to that one asset. I'm thinking, you know, a white um, interior setup, but a little functional. And I would also do a little bit of verticality. So maybe big room with two or three levels. Yeah, I'm thinking something similar. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and get a... So yeah, outdoor map, I'm thinking empty is going to do. Want to be able to play some lights. I don't know if we want any windows on it. <laughs> Um, obviously the stations are in fact quite huge. So, Yeah, I don't think Windows would be strictly necessary unless we wanted to do something like a hangar bay that the, the player kind of starts out in and then moves into another space. Kind of yeah, depends on how it, elaborate we want this to be. It's, it's like one of those things we used to say and some of them is like, are you, going to, are you building this because you're planning to have the player look at it? <laughs> yeah, so the, um, <clears throat> what I'd say is that we might want to just start off with a simple layout. And kind of work out how many object, like how elaborate do we want this to be. So, in terms of the overall project, we're kind of like at the climax here. So I'm not thinking like a big sprawling map, but maybe a uh, couple of rooms. Okay, so so that, entry that you point, bring up a good question then, is what do we actually want to do here? So the idea is that we've kind of arrived at Earth. There is the sun has been hit. There's, what is it, a um, solar ejection coming? Yep. So we've got only a there's only a few hours left before uh, Earth is destroyed. So we need to repurpose the defensive shields to withstand this blast using some science techno uh, wizardry. Uh, sort of cooked up on the, or not necessarily cooked up right on the spot, but implementation of ideas that haven't necessarily been tested in full. So remodulate yeah. shield generator probably will work, but it's our only chance type thing. So 
the idea is that probably, you know, short on staff and personnel that are capable of doing this. So a team is going to be sent in to work the generator. But here's kind of the thing is that it's a climax section. Do we want to necessarily make this non-combat? Uh, it depends. I mean, well, what would the combat be against if it was in non-combat? He's been fighting the, Vor- uh, the, uh, the, Vor- uh, the uh, Vorgons. Vorgons. Mm. Yeah. So, so you could have Vorgons beam in and try to uh, sabotage it, or maybe yeah. they've already beamed in, and that's yeah. the impetus for us getting on the station. Oh, right. Uh, uh, you're there not to actually fix it yourself, but to stop the uh, Vorgons from shooting the people that are trying to fix it. Yeah. So maybe the Vorgons are still in this. They haven't been driven out completely. There's there's sort of mopping up going, but. Infiltrators have basically um, gone up like a boarding party has gotten on board the station, and the there is a, a worry that they're going to try to sabotage it before um, the work isn't completed. So to help local security teams, we're beaming in there. Yeah, I mean, and, and that, of course, that kind of it, this is one of those situations where you want to have Captain kills them all there because you're probably going to need things to be killed. Yeah. So, what we probably would need then is sort of the first map we beam in is going to be a map that kind of sets the scene. So, kind of like beaming it onto um, a point where a few Federation officers have taken cover from an active firefight. We then move into a corridor where there's going to be a firefight. And then we basically go into the main chamber, and there's basically the boss encounter. So maybe a Vorgon commander that we've been uh, dealing with throughout the mission. Or just another Vorgon. I mean, it kind of depends on how we want to, if we want to play up one single villain or just the whole faction. Hmm. I just thought of something. We don't. There, as far as I know, in the game, there's only one time when you actually shoot Vorgons. So I don't think we have that mob in the foundry. We, no, uh, we're no gonna but, res- it would it work just fine if we reskinned another mob. Like Nausikins mm. are a really good go-to um, um, NPC group. They're relatively difficult. They are visually interesting. They've got an interesting set of powers. And they also don't push the level requirement pretty high. So we want to kind of worry about that. For also, the also that they don't have ridiculous cheese like throwing a tripwire drone at you that does something like 500 damage. Yeah, they've got some pretty, pretty powerful attacks, but it like it's just one pick from one of the lower level mobs because for the information, <sighs> I don't want to make this unaccessible. Oh, so. I, I just found something that I've never seen in the foundry before. The, one of those round, glowing orb-shaped uh, consoles from a not cool ship. Yeah, that was one of the uh, last batch of assets that were added. Hmm. All right, I've so already uh, used him in uh, one mission work. and we uh, two in relatively near future. Uh, Davidians wouldn't work quite well. No, um, Davidians are extra- exceptionally unique mobs. Hero- uh, they they can work pretty well um, for basic you know, for other factions. Um, Hyrogen work really well, um, provided you don't go up to captain. <laughs> The captains do that hollow emitter trick. Yeah, but if we want to do smaller units, um, Herogen would work pretty well because they're interesting to fight, and the weaponry too would um, be appropriate um, because they're Tetrion based using the older. They use the default Tetrion look. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it. The default Tetrian look isn't that basically just copying the weapon visuals used by the Herogen in Voyager? It's. It's pretty far off in terms of the particulars. It's, oh, it is? The general idea is kind of there, but if you compare the Herogen weapons that were released in the lockbox with the original Tetragon weapons, they're very oh. different. Hmm. And the Herogen mobs weren't updated um, for the new weaponry, too. So they're still using the uh, default. Yeah, we literally mm-hmm. have only two like, specifically designed... NPCs for the Vorgon ground. There's like nothing else as far as. Yeah, the, it's two uh, boss level uh, NPCs, and literally the those are the only ones in the entire game, and both of them like to spam Intel powers that 
Um, I'm not really sure how much time the devs spent balancing them. <laughs> yeah. So on these guys, we just want to basically put a nondescript alien mob in there, uh, reskin them for uh, Vorgon combat units. And that can be pretty easy to design, too, because all we need is just some group that's wearing a helmet. So now cool only uh, raised the level to 16? Um, they show uh, pretty the, early. The Nikul actually show up in a lot of the Agents of Yesterday missions. Yeah. yeah. So Nicole would work out pretty well. Actually, you know what? The mission where K-13 gets kicked forward through time or backwards through time or whatever, uh, that one has Nakul in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I remember them being stupid hard. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, know, but um, TOS Romulans too would also be another uh, relatively nondescript one. Yeah, do Those we want to? Well. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, uh, Herogen. Don't really know of another enemy group that. Uh, what what does it do? To the uh, level. It's also sixteen. Nausikin is, I think still um, low level. The weaponry is pretty nondescript, but it's very spiky. Yeah, but it's going to lock us into uh, Disruptor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Herogen only raises the level up to 16. Yeah, and I think that's going to be plenty for people who are uh, entering, uh, just trying to play it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah if, you, if you want to go for you zero, you're basically later tied. If you come up with something better. Yeah, if you want to go for zero, you're basically tied to the uh, Hang um, on KDF races bad. only. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I cause e- even in t- in the TOS missions, oh wait, there is a f- enemy faction you see in TOS missions that you encounter in the tutorial, but is uh, not Klingons. Well, no, um, but we don't have them. You're talking about the Jutarians. Tarians, yeah, but Tarians, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about that. Jutarians are the superior rulers. Yeah, that. Uh, the, 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 the Tarians are... Oh, we really wish we had those as founder mobs, yeah. Because they, they, they're a rather distinctive look to them and oh wait those are like totally like the uh, uh, exact opposite of what you would want for Vorgons anyways but eh, well you know yeah so uh, the mobs uh, combat placement I would sort of um, see how we're sort of playing with the space when it comes to building out the major structure and then seeing how the player is going to be entering the room So we've got this main uh, area right here, and then the um, uh, from, let's see, I'd say for the walls, like, because we want a corridor leading to sort of the intro room, where we kind of set the stage on what's going on, maybe even make this a three room. Oh, here we go. Three rooms with the sort of the intro, like a hangar bay or sort of a maintenance area that we spawn into that's kind of like just where a bunch of Federation's officers are taking cover. A second room, which is an atrium. And then the third room, which is like the core chamber, where shenanigans okay. is going on. I wonder so we if we can do- uh, reuse some of our uh, our designs for the. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, we could copy and paste that, um, especially since we're change. using. Yeah, since we're using the um, uh, building blocks. Well, I mean, we have uh, good reason to want it to look similar, anyways. Um, there is a little bit of difference in Federation building style, so you could mm-hmm. justify it as just like it's an older station or just, you know, not a, something that's built like a Federation starship. Mm-hmm. All right, let me load up uh, this map really fast so we can kind of take a look at what we've got here. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. what I, I found that, I found that thing I was talking about last show, console Klingon ship M02. That, that, that's the one that looks almost like a, a warp core. So what I was think- thinking that uh, oh. we've got the uh, the red stripe that kind of goes down the middle of the uh, um, hallways for the Enterprise J interior. What if we were to uh, switch that up to blue, like it was like a redressed uh, corridor or something? Mm. 
So it's similar, well, but yeah. Well, that's it's, it's it's like the old old TV trick where in, instead of rebuilding the the uh, set to uh, ch- uh, change uh, the uh, race of the week, you just repaint it. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at this now. I'm like, I built mine slightly differently. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all good though but yeah we could definitely like it, we're not using this map at all What's so that? what you can go ahead and do is just copy and paste what you've built and then we'll just stack that on and through one of these doors will be um, that part of the map one thing I'll say for those doors to use them for like a blocked off part of the hallway what I've actually done is actually just put an invisible wall just far enough ahead that it stops the player before the door opens so you can still actually have a hallway, it, like a hallway that looks like that, but you don't have to necessarily build out completely from that, or just have a bunch of dead ends. Yeah, it's just one little trick I found when building out this type of space, because otherwise you're kind of oh, a little bit stuck. Yeah, it's... Um, we're trying to finish off a hallway, but yeah, that little trick I found has been working out pretty well. Or maybe since a firefight is coming on, we can put like debris or whatnot in front of it. Oh, yeah, that's that way blocked. Hmm. Oh, just uh, do the old uh, uh, flaming wreckage trick. Pretty much. Oh, there are several different Klingon consoles that have glowy energy things in them. But that that M zero two one that I mentioned earlier is the only one that really looks like a warp core. Hmm. Okay, so we're thinking we're going to need a bay. I'm actually going to do a little block blocking out here. So let's say that's our bay. Then we want a uh, get these up to the right height. I'm actually going to load up my Enterprise J map right here <laughs> just to see how far I'm off I am. Because I, I kind of built it for a little well, bit of memory a little bit of going back to the show. I mean, it's totally fine. It's different. I just want to make sure that it's kind of on mark. Well, okay. So in fairness, what we're really going to end up using it here for is not the Enterprise J. It doesn't have to be oh, a perfect match. And in fairness, I mean, mine was just an attempt to recreate the actual Enterprise J interior. I, I kind of just uh, just kind of curious at this point, just to see how that's because I was going for the same thing and use similar assets. Just uh, I think right now different proportions and orientation. You also, because I found that I didn't hit the asset limit, I added a lot more stuff. You know, what's uh, stupid and ironic is that uh, we basically had Zero asking us what we wanted last week, and none of us asked for Enterprise J stuff oh, because or 20, anything like, 26th century. Because I, she's talked about that stuff before, and she has mentioned that she's trying to get the Enterprise J interior to us. So mm. I did kind of want to repeat that one on the list. Because I know it's something she's already working on. So it's just like, okay, you know, just take the opportunities, things that she might not know we want. Because we've been talking about this for a while. And an actual Enterprise J interior would be great. Um, it just wouldn't have the conference facilities that. <laughs> I need for this one particular space. Yeah. Also, I already built it. So. And I, and I, I mean, I remember seeing stuff. pictures of your map, and I thought it looked very nice. Yeah, the um, I had a lot of fun just you know being a little creative with the uh, ceiling detail, uh, just in the usual geometric style. Um, I also added. I actually did uh, attempt to make an Enterprise J uh, suite of uh, well, suite of sort of. We wanted to call these ready rooms, like rooms that field teams would prepare in. Oh, sort of und- yeah. So I having- I've got a bunch of those. It's just sort of like a series of gags for who your team's going to be. Because for me, that's been a lot of time vacillating on that. So I've got some optional dialogue on this map for actual like groups of characters that 
I was going to write for, but now I'm going to be doing a different mission, but I still have the assets in the file, so I might as well use them as crew. Um, so I got that, and an actual, like, just actual quarters. I built that just to kind of play with some ideas for how kind of home life would be um, on a ship like this. So there's a very large console type thing that of indeterminate function. Wow. Yeah, so that looks all good. Yeah, kind of similar idea. I kind of used the um, pillars edge on. And I did some things with the door to make it a little cheaper. Hmm. Looks pretty so, good. Yeah, so I used actually a couple of pillars on either side to sort of like, uh, to sort of, uh, to cover up the door opening and closing. It, just in the right proportions and also something that would snap to grid easily that I could just keep copying, pasting, and efficiently build with. And we got the consoles. Yeah, this is a small map compared to what I've been building recently. For some, since uh, downtime has been back, that I'm back in it, it's like, oh, okay. I was building something more grand for SSF. <laughs> um, we do actually have one set of TOS themed doors in the foundry. Uh, it's just that they're not regular hallway doors. They're those things that are used in the engineering section to uh, keep people from touching stuff. <laughs> oh, the, uh, yeah, those. Um, uh, the, 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 the red orange. metal great ones. Yeah, yeah, the orange. Yeah, yeah, those ones. Those are actually pretty useful just for miscellaneous, like, uh, interior exteriors. But if you do want to, like, do some serious building with those, they do take up a lot of assets because they're narrow. Very small. Hey, Duncan, try doing a screen share with me. Okie dokie. If the stream explodes for any reason, um, uh, share screens. Start. There we go. My frame rate went down a little bit, but... A little laggy, but it is working. Yeah, the lagginess is also apparently visually on my end. I've been doing a little bit of um, playing with video card settings, so... Yeah, chugging a little bit, but... All right, I'd have to recalibrate it. Okay. Oh, I know. I know why it's not loading, lining up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if you hide your uh, Skype window, I can actually throw up your. Uh... Hey. Hi, interior. Yeah, and well, this is getting towards content complete. Um, just with this physical structure, it's just throwing together all the um, assets. Yeah, like you mentioned with that embedding the uh, that one console in the wall. I'm looking at it like on the stream now, and it seems like the shadowing is different. But yeah, I guess that's just the display on. Like I like it looks like oh wow that's interesting because it looks like there's like no ambient inclusion. On that, but yeah, weird. But anyway, yeah, this is kind of what I've got going on right now um, with the hallway. So a little bit busier, um, but that's because it it's kind of had to be a little bit for some of the structural elements, and also I wanted to sort of break up the uh, kind of the flat gray walls a little bit more. Said console using a little bit of a different style for the consoles. Um, just because I was playing around with some ideas. And some optional dialogue stuff. And then in here we've got a conference area. Um, where teams are sort of assembling. So you're seeing a little bit of a uh, kind of a cross-section of the Alliance. So we've got some Octani, um, uh, Noskin. I think it's pronounced Octani. 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 Octani is what I've been seeing in the foundry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Octani. Uh, wow. Well, there, it's like two T's in it. Octanti. Hmm. Eh, whatever. 
I'm Googling it. Oh, it is Octanti. Rick is right. Well, yeah, from Delta Rising, uh, Delta Rising, Should I thought it was No better than to question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have been wrong before, but, you know. Yeah, I just wore in, like, <laughs> the, the second T wasn't very pronounced. I think it was like, um, there's a few lines of dialogue with you recruiting those guys. Hmm. All right, I'm going to switch back over. and. Uh, okay. Yeah, because that's all I've got to this map, basically. And oh. I'm going to stop. What I'm doing now is I'm actually kind of starting to play with the uh, layouts. Just to kind of get a feel of how long it takes to like run through like an area. It wasn't too long yet. I'm going to have to extend the... Uh, or little shuttle bay or whatever. Uh, my frame rate's back now. <laughs> yep. Um, Capture yeah, reduces. I, yeah. I'm thinking for the second room maybe a little bit um a little bit larger. This core room, yeah, that's that, that's nice and, you know, epic scale and it gives a lot of uh, building potential for uh, set pieces. I always find one of the challenges with maps is uh, how to make sure there's enough things to do on a map to justify its existence. Yeah, so on this one, if we're going to be repelling boarding teams, it's going to be a um, few combat sections. So probably three in total. Like, So you have your sort of first briefing with um, just you know a couple lines of dialogue, Star Fleet personnel saying, hey, we're here, but yeah, the... Um, the Vorgons are up to X and Y. Could you help us stop them? You say, okay. Maybe a couple of dialogue options that allow you to spawn in reinforcements. Maybe disarm um, a few bombs. Yeah, that too. Um, so yeah, and, so that that would be and, sort of like um, sort of object, like if a bomb in the hallway here, bomb in the next room, and then bomb as the start of what's going on in the core room. Then something else is also going on in the core room. So we move from the bomb defusal to then do something with the power core, so we do technical MacGuffins. I'm thinking that we need another us... room. I think we need at least two rooms, not counting the starting area, we need at least two rooms and then the core room. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll also probably at, at some point have a Herogen stick the... Uh, uh, um, dang it. I forgot the name of them again. Crap. Uh, just, just stick, the, stick the board guy and guy's skull on a, a spike and on the wall. Wait. No. That was can, can we? Oh. I was just thinking. Oh. Can we actually make four guns? Do we have four guns? We don't uh, have four guns as NPCs, uh, but like we've got to at least improvise because they're in the mission. As far as I know, we have that weird costume. I don't know TNG. For, yeah, Jorgen's got the answer. Yeah. Okay. Let's. I, I'll let's, fill you in later. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have those guys, and then I think we can also just create another uh, costume for cannon fodder, just to liven up some of the combat mobs. So we just we don't have the guy we've been talking to on the view screen, or you know, um, also. Ooh, being... you know what? For for the generic uh, scrub, Vorgons, you could give them that Tholian silk robe. I'm also thinking just something to obscure the face, just to you know make them appropriate, basically stormtroopers. Oh, the the bad war hood and mask. Um, only recolored. That would be one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the Vodwar mask. It, like actually, just the Vodwar mask would be interesting because you just do the same, you know, the same head type as we've been using, but you just cover up the face. You can also do a combination of glasses and the rear breather. One thing that is really nice about uh, Snap to Grid is uh, when you're doing early uh, placing, 
like this because you can just line everything up really quick. Yeah, uh, that's how we build all my maps. One of the things that uh, I was talking with one of the uh, content designers uh, from crypting at Star Trek Las Vegas was the uh, the fact that they uh, do a lot of uh, like mission prototyping where they'll just build like bare minimum to uh, kind of map out the location. And then, yeah, build out the complete environment. But I mean, yeah, they'll they'll just do uh, like a white boxing where they uh, like set up something stupid, simple, no textures, no nothing complicated and just like test the uh, um, feel of the mission and see whether or not yeah. it. Uh... Yeah. Shooters are really a, very often developed on that principle. Um, I know it was the first dev podcast I listened to was the uh, Bungie studios podcast for um, Halo um, back when they're making Halo three. And yeah, they, you showed off some of that white boxing for, you know, these complex um, environments. And even those could be pretty elaborate just with how those spaces kind of took shape for that style of gameplay. But it was still the idea that you don't put the full investment in there with the environment artists working out all the details because, yeah, you're probably going to change a lot of it. And the development pipeline, basically by the time you're ready to sort of hand that over, you, yeah... Well, you it's, kind of it's, want them it's, to be. it's like what with Taco said about his uh, general approach to uh, uh, building maps is that um, it's it's kind of like the old thing where it's never really finished, merely um, you uh, stop working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, art cool. is never completed, only abandoned. Uh, that's how I'm feeling about this Enterprise J interior. I'm like, ah, oh, I could do more because, uh, yeah, I have been building more complex recently, but uh, it's good enough for what I need, and I gotta move on to another type of space. And also, I do have more grand um, environments later on in this uh, project. All right, I think this needs to be a little bigger. I mean, it, it, it's just one of those things where you could always do more to make it better. It's just that how much time do you have that you can spend on working on it? That yeah. sort of thing. Point of diminishing returns, too, because at a certain point you're going to do a lot of fine tweaking, but that effort could be... Fine tweaking that no one else would ever notice you ever did. Yeah, <laughs> that goes for most of my dialogue. Uh, let me throw in a few I actually things find, that, find that fine tweaking dialogue is something more likely to be noticed because of the fact that people sometimes actually read the dialogue well yeah it's just like how do how one thing plays out versus another thing plays out people might have a small reaction but it might be below threshold for their noticing so you don't necessarily get much more but you can definitely do a lot with that very detailed approach even if someone doesn't really sort of notice how much time was put into there versus your first draft All right, I'm just throwing up a few uh, basic. Uh... I just, just noticed something amusing about this Herogen netting prop. You can't stand on it. You can't walk through it. But if you try to stand on it, you'll just like slide off onto the floor somehow. And I this think is... I man managed to get myself stuck inside it. Just out of curiosity, Dragoon, have you ever played Halo 1? Uh, I have not. I haven't done a ton of okay. Halo. Uh, I was going to say, that, like, because the first mission on that could actually be a good source of inspiration for how this plays out with how to stage some of these encounters. So, like, you sort of, like, door opens, and what opens is basically an ongoing firefight between two NPC groups. So it's not just that we spawn a bunch of guys and they're just waiting for us. Um, like through the first combat section, the first mob could actually be we w like we hit a trigger point which spawns Federation mobs on sort of the far side of the room. So we're basically entering the room, 
with the uh, Vorgons uh, looking down, like looking opposite from where we're uh, walking in, and they're fighting. We can flip that around, but yeah, just like something that's already in progress. Uh, that actually reminds me a lot of um, uh, what was it? Oh, the Bria 3 map. The, the, the way the uh, spawns on that mob map work is that there are certain ones where you will see that are constantly on the map at all times. Most of those are just there for decoration. The ones you actually fight are usually not spawned uh, uh, until you hit some trigger. Often standing on top of the building where they're going to spawn. Yeah, I actually did that one yesterday because of the featured episode replay thing because I had uh, recruits who don't have all of their uh, reward thingies yet for the featured episode plays. Then I got to the end of the mission and realized that... uh, that I played it on my Delta recruit, who actually did have that particular reward already. I just apparently I forgot to use it. Eh, weird. Oh well. I've only had to do a um, uh, replay so far on one character because everyone else for mine is long established, so they've all got it. Well, turns turns out that only TOS recruits are newer than the last time they did featured episode replay. Actually, they're not. Um, my TRS recruit has a um, has all the rewards already. They did a feature episode replay sometime after uh, del- uh, 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 Agents of Yesterday. Did? Mm. Yeah. So I, I, I'll I, double check that because actually, like I said, the, the one I did it on yesterday was my Delta, Delta recruit Reman. Yeah, so... so like, Ooh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I should double check and make sure he has the Reman bridge officer. I, I looked through his uh, officer list and didn't see it. Then at, when the mission's over, it won't let me claim the Riemann guy. I'm like, wait, what? So I look at all of the uh, uh, bridge officers in my inventory and realized that he, he'd somehow gotten stuck in my inventory and stayed there. Oops. Yeah. The, um, but yeah, like I've got the future episode rewards, both on my Delta recruit and my um, uh, temporal recruit, too. So they they like they I think they are the frequencies now like this sort of thing is now once per year around the anniversary. Hmm. That'd be cool. These guys there. These will be my stand-in for. So yeah, what I'm doing is basically I'm just laying out the bare minimum. So there's no walls at the moment, just some platforms. And I'm just uh, laying out where my where things need to occur. So we'll, for instance, we got one. We're gonna need a uh, a bomb. Let's see if there's a good crate that I can. This alien, so I don't want it to look. Ah, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> Take one Not of the like smaller the undine at. Uh, assets because some of the undine assets are basically just this uh, yellow green lump. Um, maybe a little too alien for those guys. For oh, uh, too alien for the Vorgons. Well, this is this is Federation. Oh, Federation. Oh, actually, you know what? For well, no, the Vorgons. I just thought of something. The Vorgons are the other kind of alien. The Vorgon are the kind of aliens who would. Uh, their bomb would probably, or more likely, look like one of those crystalline spike things. Oh, we're doing the bomb thing. Okay, I thought we were looking at consoles. Uh, no, no, I was looking at. I'm not even worried about consoles. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, for the bomb, I mean, canister would work just fine. Uh, a, a, a crystalline um, spike with a blinking light on it. That 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 would be. Uh, this is something I could totally visualize the war guns using, though. We could actually do a crystal prop so long as you use one of the ones that's not going to be turned on, like, so just making sure that it's not going to be lost if you don't turn on high-detail objects. But you could mm. do Horda Egg on top of a crystal. Yeah, one mm. of these... Isn't, isn't there, like a, like, a separate blinking light uh, object 
that you can place for the ground? Um, I don't think as a standalone thing. No, I don't think those blinking things... lights small. A, t- a small particle effect looks like a blinking light, much like an airplane warning light. We would need to test that one out because I think I've tried that recently and it didn't work. And it might be because of lighting 2.0. And in fairness, those I'm light not effects that... with. I, I'm already in the foundry, so I, I will uh, test it uh, immediately. Yeah, because it's objects, lighting objects that have no no physical structure. So, like, all the um, Omni lights, none of those work anymore. So, for the new lighting system, it basically has to have, like, the lights are tied to objects. So, if there's no object there for the asset, then it doesn't have the mm-hmm. light. I'm thinking, though, that the game engine should be able to handle it, even if the object that the uh, light is tied to is basically a speck of dust with no uh, collision. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's why the Omni lights, we don't have those anymore. Hmm. Because, yeah, because now our lights are all tied to individual assets. I mean, it might be something that devs can do, but I think it's just for the assets that we have access to. Hmm. So, set. All right, well, for the sake of this test, it doesn't really matter too much what they look like. Okay, the uh, the blinking light thing, it it does show up. It is visible. Oh, awesome. It is actually named Blink Ling Light, not Blink Ing Light, but whatever. Oh, it's a white artist for good spellers. It, I'm actually not sure if it uh, provides a light source. Yeah, so it might not, yeah, it might just be just the sort of the more like, is it like the beacon? It, it's, it's a lot like the uh, Bink. Uh, the beacon that you have it, it for the space maps. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, it's, no, it's, it, it's a, yeah, that's that not it, it looks like a button flashing. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So that's going to be, you know, basically, yeah, not a lighting two point thing because that's just an asset. Something on this map it has flickering light, but it because I, I see like reflections on the weapons that are flickering, but it's not flickering in sync with this uh, uh, asset. So I don't think it's this asset. I was going to make sure I changed my Y values. There's also a sphere for the Borg throne that might also um, stand in as a component for the bomb. Um, Oh yeah, Borg gun. That does kind of feel like the sort of thing a Borg gun might use. uh, There's also TOS asset that's basically kind of like a vertical column. Oh, there's a few of those miscellaneous like TOS props that you could use as mis- uh, components and like side there, there, or something. There are several TOS props that are very generic because they were created so that the people who are doing the props could uh, reconfigure the set easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, at this point, it does it doesn't matter. What we're mostly trying to do is get the. Uh... Get the feel right for the combat section. Yeah. Actually, though, this reminds me of something uh, about the Beta Rana incident, and part of the reason why people liked it so much is that it's one of the rare occasions where I didn't actually finish map building before writing the story. I actually wrote out the this story before I 
did anything more than like the bare minimum basics of the map. So every time I did map preview, I ended up reading the story again. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, I should tweak that over and over again. Honestly, the, the result was okay. Okay, the Blink FX uh, props, unlike the blinkling light, the Blink FX props make that loud ping noise each time they blink. <laughs> so uh, if you want a loud ping noise, go for it. Yeah, I can't say that I do, except if it's like we're, we're trying to evade um, the space dolphins and their echolocation. They're pinging us. Can't you hear it? It's the machine that goes ping. Yeah, Beacon Blink FX and Beacon Blink FX icon. I'm not sure what the difference between the two of them is. They look about the same. Yeah, to me. and those are both uh, space props, too. I think they might actually be oh. available on the ground, too. Oh, well, that's what. Oh, they are available on ground. It's just that they make that uh, loud bong, bling, whatever noise oh. every time they flash. Or I think get, I tried to use get... them and ended up not because of that. The noise is annoying. That's it's called. Beacon Blink FX. Blinkling light small. That one, on the other hand. It's just a small flashing light, like what you would have for like an intercom button or something, I guess. I actually wonder if maybe the person who attempted to spell this when they added it to the database. Uh, was thinking twinkling and blinking at the same time and got the two confused. Because twinkling would actually fit this too. Twinkling, twinkling, little asset. I remembered why we don't tend to do multi object <laughs> triggers. That's okay. We can just do complete all with three triggers. I've got the Halo theme song stuck in my head for... <laughs> We're going to go through this section. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I actually one one theme song that got stuck in my head recently is the Monster Island theme song from uh, Champions Online. Oh well, I'm gonna take a look at the. Uh... Yo. <laughs> what are you trying to do? I was going to take a look at, through the uh, cost, uh, costumes, play around with a Vorgon Stormtrooper. Hmm. Well, Dragon claims that he's uh, created a Vorgon before. And, I well, want. He, well, he, I'm gonna, he posted I'm the, work on the Yeah. But I'm gonna, just going to work on that the head and helmet because certain things would work better than others. Yeah, Counter Command Exo is a character, <laughs> a character in the anthology. So we, we can't, can't can't do like, oh, look at all these stormtroopers. Wait, they look like our fleet admiral. Anyway, here's the picture that uh, Drogon shared. Uh. Guess the Vorgon is the 
I guess the one on the uh, first one on the right is meant to be the uh, Vorgon. Uh, yeah, I think it's first one on the right. Yeah. So we don't have the new cool bit, so we need to work up a new uniform. Actually, yeah. um, cool bits would be good to have in the foundry, but uh, let's see. I'm sure we could work up something that's. I'm actually just corrosion, uh, maybe without all the armor bits. Um, mm -hmm. and colored correct, colored better. That would work. I'm thinking for the helmet. Um, just to sort of get something that ba it looks like something that actually would look kind of appropriate is the um, Voth helmet. That mm. looks pretty good. Um, if you color the visor um, something different, it kind of stands out. And you can do either a white or a black, and then color the <laughs> um, the trooper armor accordingly. Using I'm using Delta Alliance. Uh, these don't work. Omega Force. Really generic. Uh, either that or we can do a um eh, a little too primitive. Yeah, we could just do one of the um um the uh kit armor the pieces. And uh the tight section. So one of the uh, cheap base suits, because that does have the neck that does appropriately cover up the, uh, the helmet. So yeah, like the um, alpha set for the suit, because yeah, it's appropriately shiny too. So wait, I, I just thought of something. Don't Vorgons only have two fingers? Can't do a whole lot about that. <laughs> not that anybody's going to be looking that close. Hmm. Well, sure hope not. Because I, I, I just realized something that that's something it. we don't even have as an option to uh, create NPCs with. Because there are some cryptic NPCs that have weird hands like that. But the ones that we have as customizable assets do not. Nope. Okay, so how am I coming through to you guys now? You sound, you sound fine. Okay, good. My, my upload is complete. <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm back for real now. So yeah, I'm just looking at the armor set and just one of the um, the alpha um, base suits that would work out pretty well, especially because you can color that kind of like the same as the visor, and then just theme that accordingly. So that would work as just sort well, of a. Um, uh, trust standard. me, my my Vorgon looks quite good. Um, oh, well, I I can't claim it to be mine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, no, that does um, that does look good. Found um, a I'm just video online that uh, details how to make them. I'm just mm. thinking for a um, sort of a ground, like a uh, uh, cannon fodder infantry unit. Yeah, generic yeah. soldier soldier guy. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just with those two together, I mean, that's that's pretty good. And then you can just keep adding more kit pieces. And then, oh, wait a minute. What if I? Ooh, I'm gonna flip this guy over to Romulan because. What you can do is mix the um the uh let's see where's the the Riemann chest plate ah there we go that's a pretty mm. good one the Riemann chest plate on the suit uh alpha with a um Voth helmet mm. show your that's screen and I'll, I'll share do your screen and there goes my frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> didn't used to be this bad. That is interesting. It, it's yeah, a bit more I can see white that. than I would have expected, but the uh, oh yeah, I'm just playing around with the texture right is uh, something interesting. Yeah, because it's going to be pretty different. Then you can just resize the head a little bit. I kind of like that. Yeah. I don't know, the Vorkans kind of almost tend towards more of a uh, peach color. Yeah, and with the armor suit, you get a lot of options to play with. Um, the one problem is the uh, helmet, so you got to kind of work with the visor for the colors, so you can do that. Yeah, purple would work in. Does does the visor color? What colors does the visor do? Does it actually uh, purple? It's, it's, yep, I've got purple, like some of the, just the main. Oh. You know. Not 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 a wide array of colors, but very different colors to work with. Yeah, so it's the the sort of the light up piece uh, color. 
that we got. So, so something, yeah. So something like that, I think, would work out pretty well. Hmm. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Azure is killed in the mission where you go back to the sacking of Earth. Um, is Baratus? Does he survive all the missions, yeah, or do we do we kill uh, him? We kill, we kill no, him. We kill him. We, yeah, it, when eventually. We go to the point, um, the mission before Ragnarok. Mm. Okay. So, so yeah, food. And I know that because those missions are not skippable. <laughs> See, because it's uh, her death that causes him to choose to ally the Vorgons, or at least fac- sub faction that is actually willing to listen to him with the uh, time, whatever consortium. I call resistance. them the temporal axis of evil. The temporal's people's front. Mm. Oh, the, right. the, uh, the people's front of temporal. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think that the, the name of that was inspired by the uh, mutant liberation front from the comic books. It's, it's, it? it's like the actual name is like the temporal liberation front, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there have been groups named that all throughout like history, right? Mm, possibly. And of course, you know, the, the Monty Python sketch that you were just referencing, yep. Duncan. Because I, I kind of suspect that the Mutant Liberation Front wasn't exactly a particularly creative name in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> no, it probably grew out of all the, you know, the... If I remember right, it was named by um yeah i forget what this name was he's a pretty big name comic book artist or at least he used to be who who was famous for liking to draw lots of pouches huge guns and hiding characters feet because apparently he sucked at drawing feet or something uh rob, rob liefeld that guy I remember reading about a particular artist who didn't think he could draw ears very well, so he always had characters with big hair so they would cover their ears. Hmm. Yep, Fed definitely won that one. <laughs> Might need to make the our Vorgans a little tougher. Okay, so in the... Um, Foundry costume creator, we have access to the hierarchy head, right? Yep. Yeah, it's a regular. It's named a regular. Yeah, it's called something different, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, were, actually, yeah. yeah, isn't the basic shape of the hierarchy head one of those things we've had in the game since launch nope. as an alien option? No, it just appeared nope. as um, with Delta Rising. Yeah. Mm. It's so I remember yeah. that that we've actually had several. Uh, head types, uh, e- even from way back we, in the we old had days. the ridged one and the dual lobes. Mm-hmm. Well, just but looking at the ridge. picture, it looks like they've got really elongated, ridged heads. Well, I- if you're ready, I can walk you through building one. Oh, sure. Hang on, let me finish okay. playing through this. You want to create I'm a character? Going through and. Uh, Of course, Erosion can cloak. I, I haven't actually been able to watch the stream uh, up until now, <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm quite interested in what you've built here. It's 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 not you know, pretty. It's, like, it's it's Cloud City. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there to test the. Uh, Obviously, you're going to build some walls. Yeah, I probably yeah, won't even use the, this uh, floor. I'm just. Uh, I just noticed something weird. I, I was looking at the uh, overall pattern uh, data field and. There's two options visible for Stripe 03, which appear to be identical. It's strange that there would be two of them, though. Hmm. A bug in the foundry? That's insane. Well, uh, Stripe 03 is is uh, the uh, Bolian uh, skinned uh, markings. 
Um, yeah, so I don't clear, have that. Clearly, your consoles. Uh, it, it, it might be that Y value changes. It, it might be that that it only occurs for certain head shapes because I set it to a category ridged for the head shape. Uh, ridged head, overall pattern. Yep, I've only got the three stripes. Hmm. Weird. Wait, are you doing on a, a Starfleet female alien? Oh, not female. Doing male. Uh, let's see. Yeah, where's that character? There we go. Ridged uh, alien. Oh, yep, yeah, I got the two there. Yeah, huh. probably just duplicate reference. A lot of that uh, follows from the main game. So uh, features that are just added to the uh, basic tailor also do bleed over to um, the foundry. That's when we got the regular. Okay, so obviously more work to do, but I'm, what are we thinking of this layout? Um, layout, I think, is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the twisting works fine. Um, we don't need to do a whole lot of like verticality, so stairways, stuff like that. Um, for yeah. a combat section like this, because that would just, you know, increase the build time and um, doesn't get a whole get us anywhere on something that's supposed to be, you know, just the quick climax. So yeah, and there's plenty of verticality in that. We've got the uh, the main area, and there's several levels. I probably was going to put like uh, some of those pillars like all the way around, and then like between each layer, so that it uh, kind of it angles in. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Using the sari and skin complexion on humanoid faces. It's it, different. It makes them look like the salamander people from Threshold. <laughs> but who will answer there's, the question? There's an obscure TV reference. Well, <laughs> except for you know the fact that you know we talk about that episode quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, I thought I thought he meant the I thought he meant the TV show called Threshold. Oh, it's about which Salamander, was, oh. which was on for like half a season before. No, I, I I was actually <laughs> talking about the uh, uh, tr transition form where mm, yeah. Tom Paris is halfway between human and uh, and which, turning into an actual salamander. He has like kind of like this humanoid salamander look for a few is, Exactly what won that episode in Emmy. <laughs> okay. All right, Drogan, um, I'm ready for you to talk me through. Uh, okay, making a foregun. So Start you got your you get your hierarchy head. Okay. Or whatever it's called. Okay, skin uh, color. Obviously, a few of these things will be different from bridge officer to foundry character. Oh, hang on, i got to switch to Alien. That's why it's not working. It's like, why can't I pick it? <laughs> okay. All right, so... Uh, the skin color is going to be... Okay, second from the bottom. Second row from the bottom. Um, two over from the middle, to the left. Kind of a light orange. Okay. Okay. Overall pattern is going to be Kobali. I got to go the the next sinkage. <laughs> okay. Uh, and for color for the overall pattern, you're going to want a purple in the dark purple row, four from the left. Okay. Uh, and for the intensity on that one, you wanted a little right of center on that slider. A. Okay. Uh, base complexion, you want benzite. And forehead de detail, you want herogen. Interesting, because uh, 
look at the picture and their foreheads look somewhat smooth. Well, trust me, this will look okay when it comes out. I know, if I turn down the intensity, it's not so bad. <laughs> um, let's see. Forehead detail, Herogen. Uh, nose detail, Jim Hadar. That we definitely want kinda, to ratchet I, it all the way up. I kind of find it interesting that, that we have these uh, Jim Hadar parts, but not uh, certain of the others. Mm-hmm. Well, these okay, ones came here, around with a lockbox. Here's a detail one. Oh, okay, so uh, for the tattoo, we need a tattoo. Native 01. Okay. For the color you want. For the color you want, third row from the bottom all the way over to the right. Like a dark red? Um, yes. Okay. All, all the way over to the right. There you go. Okay. The X scale, you want it... Well, first, okay, first rotate it. Um, Take the rotation slider almost all the way to the left. Not quite the full way. Now you want the X scale almost all the way to the right. Actually, both the X and Y scales almost all the way to the right. Okay. Okay. Um, Y position a little bit to the right of center. Pretty sure I see what you're doing here. Okay. Um, eyes, you want humanoid? Okay. It doesn't look like they put any makeup on it. The actors for that. Okay. So, now, um, hair, none. Uh, and no eyebrows either. If it gives you that option. Okay. Um, let's see. Ears, I think it does. does there, are there ears on it by default? Yes. I'm going to take, take those off. Got the little crystal thing on the on the side of their head, but I don't know that we're gonna be able to do that. There, there's some of it that you're not able to actually do. This just gets you close, and since close is all we need, because it's yeah. <laughs> close is all we need. <laughs> uh, musical episode. That's definitely gonna be a component. Okay, now some sliders for the so, head scaling options. Uh, what about Coral Four for head attach organic? Too much? Um, or... I I thought it was too much. Okay. You you could say that the you know the crystal things is not uh, not all of them have to have that. Well, no, it's, it's, they've got that, that glittery strip along the top, top side of their heads. Mm-hmm. Say, like, maybe, maybe every member of the species doesn't necessarily have that. Yeah. Just thought of something. Um, how long have we had Celo Laris ears? Uh, since forever. Really? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> those are, you know, I just started with the game, you know, uh, after its second, second anniversary, we had those in. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So for sliders, okay, you want head overall width all the way to the right. Okay. Uh, head overall height. Um, you want halfway between middle and right. Depth, okay. you want all the way over to the right. Uh, skull height, you want just a little bit to the right of center. 
uh, cranium slope in the middle of in exact center. Cranium width you want uh, halfway between center and left. Okay. Forehead slope in the middle. Forehead width you want uh, halfway between center and left. Cheekbones you want all the way to the right. So cheek and size cheek, all the way down. Cheek size all the way to the left, yeah. Uh, so, cheek position a little bit left of center, or a little bit right of center, sorry. Okay. All right, eye size uh, in the middle, eye width a little bit to the right. Eye position. Okay. Almost all the way to the left, but not quite. Uh, same for ice spacing. Okay. Uh, eye depth, you want all the way to the left. Same with brow position and brow furrow. Okay. And brow position a little bit to the left of center. Brow protrusion. Protrusion, yeah. Uh, okay. So that's looking pretty good. Yeah. What, what? Looking a bit Vorgani. Um, let's see. Yeah, Up chin width and chin length look pretty good. Maybe you, you could extend the chin length a bit. Um, let's see, I've got jaw width all the way over to the left as well. All the way to the left? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, and lip, lip fullness as well, all the way to the left. These guys have no lips. <laughs> exactly. I take down mouth protrusion too. Their their lips are pretty uh, mm -hmm. inset. Yeah. The um, I sent a screenshot for the uh, finished version of the armor. Although one thing I'll say is that I built it using some Romulan, uh, the Romulan chess piece. If you switch an alien to Romulan, the sliders will change. So it's probably best to build the um, the basically the phased Forgon as the Klingon or Federation, and then the troopers. Just if you choose to use the design, just uh, go with the Rom. Uh, those guys is Rom. Mm. You know, I, I was wondering if we had the ability to use the low by earrings. And we don't. But I did notice something interesting. And that is that uh, fed aliens can use all of the Bajoran earring styles. Those are the only ones they have, though. Hmm. So, yeah, there's your, there's your basic Vorgon. Okay. I'm wondering if we can't take the uh, forehead slope down. Because all of their their bulge is in the back. Let's switch up their eye color too, which we didn't really set. Up. I think I'm going with a going to go with a yellow. We didn't set an eye color. Yeah, when I picked up the. Um... The not cool uh, battle cruiser for cheap. <laughs> um, on you know, thanks to you guys for letting me know that was. Those are not very valuable on the exchange. <laughs> uh, the Acheros. Um, yeah, the Acheros or whatever you call it. Um, I decided I want wanted 
all of the temporal axis of evil. So I had the um, the mirror uh, Lita bridge officer hologram for starters. Oh, picked up a awesome. kratom, picked up a kratom buff. Um, we have costume options for spirit, fear, sphere builders, um, but I had to create a. Actually, I'd already created a uh, regular sort of look for them uh, for faces. Use, use, use like a random alien bridge officer for those. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's just one of those things where you basically need to mold the face to have like almost no details or texture on it as close as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of it, it's kind of a plain face. Very smooth. Not quite, you know, changeling smooth, but uh and then of course my bridge off or my captain was the uh not cool. Which we don't have either, so I had to <laughs> improvise. Build, build a, a, a close enough improvise. version of that. I thought of maybe putting the, um, you know, getting the uh, temporal operative armor uh, from the temporal rep and using the helmet with that because I think you can use that with regular tailor pieces. Yep. Hmm. So you didn't have to look at his uh, not exact ugly face. But I haven't gotten around to that yet. Not sure what to do for clothes for him. I mean, they wear that weird layered clothing. Um, just uh, you've still uh, got the screenshot up. Yeah, the only oh, silk robe would kind of just be a good default for our officer. I'm thinking. Yeah, and since we got the, you know, accidentally got the jumpsuit added for every single conceivable category, um, it's a little harder to just kind of browse through on the category level. But it's, yeah, it's okay. A lot of those junk ones. Actually, um, it, it's, it's Zindi, useful to have on, it in there. Hold on. Uh, Zindi Reptile Soldier on the bottom. Whoa, whoa, like, whoa, hang on. What was that? What was what? Uh, the puppet? Uh, Oh, yeah, the Balak puppet? Yeah. That's new. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah. Or we, <laughs> um, yeah, we covered that on a previous show, and he doesn't have hand or doesn't, doesn't have arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must have been the one that I had to be gone for. So Wait, wait, hold it. Uh, what, what? Isn't that canon, though, is that the Balak puppet actually didn't have arms because but he has the... hand but because it's a npc he's got hands though oh i see do... yeah um so. i i think it was it's something that in the regular game is only seen on the view screen right uh Wrong. it's an asset in the uh, k13 player fleet holding star base but yeah, oh, okay. it's just the um t- uh, torso and the head <laughs> So that is actually not programmed into the uh, starbase as an NPC, though. It's basically just a background prop, as far as I know. Yeah. Did you notice we have the Lucari thingy in here? Yeah, that's one of the um, recent, uh, well, last uh, update to the uh, costume options. It's interesting because that glowing thing in the middle is not reshadable at all. Um, actually, I think you that, can recolor it, but you can't get rid of it. If you because, recall, that's what happened the last time Zero happened to be in our chat room. Yeah. Is those got added. Yeah, the Lucari, um, Lucari got added, uh, the temporal suit and the Terran, uh, reputation armor. And, um, the, uh, I, I, I seem to be able to recolor every part of the Lucari thing except the glowing moving thing in the middle the glowing moving thing can be recolored but it's pretty it yeah it how let me go back to it again so lucari armor is can definitely be recolored lucari armor oh wait a minute that's not working in it uh, let's see uh yeah undershirt option 
Oh, uh, I see what you mean now. Is yep. There you go. Okay, that's interesting looking. Hmm. Because uh, the the default look has multiple colors, and this adds a shade to it, but it doesn't really. Certain aspects of it stay the same color that they are at default. Oh well. I think we might have to come up with something original for the uh... the uh, Vorgon. Uh, I'm, just not, I'm not going to be able to get close to that. Yeah, <laughs> so that's why I'm thinking just a generic robe would work just fine. Just uh, very simple. Like the, like the Tholian silk robe I was mentioning earlier. <laughs> yeah, that one would. That, or yeah. or a shirt like you know maybe someone like the Kranum uniforms or the. Um... Yeah, Kranum would actually be pretty appropriate. I mean, yeah, thematically, Krenum would work out pretty well. What about Time Traveler recolored? Oh, that weird weird thing that yeah, looks that like would work. spaghetti that, wrapped yeah, around that your chest. Yeah, um, maybe two with a... I don't know if you do the full jump. Actually, one interesting take on it would be you have the top, but it looks like he's just kind of like throwing pants over it. So you do a um, sort of the uh, the high the um, the high tucked uh... Vorgons, of course. Uh, yeah, tucked high are, are well known for having no fashion sense whatsoever. Yeah, so this kind of like uh, let's see, yeah. So it just kind of looks like he's just wearing a um, basically something that's been sort of improvised on top of it. Hmm. It's just kind of sell like, you know, these guys are kind of terrorists, so. And Miner didn't look too bad, if you recall it, that one. Uh, Miner. Uh, it's, it's a little too normal for them. Well, yeah, I'm thinking something else. Uh, the, um, the bulkier pants. So the, um, the, the talked high. In the category options. What do you think? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. So it's the the it's. Oh, let me just make sure I got the wording right. Lower, um, tucked hot pants, tucked high. Okay. So yeah, uh, a little bit behind on the stream delay here, but. Yeah, just any one of those uh, one of those options might work well. Um, padded thighs. Yeah. Uh, do you have? Let's see. Do you have Gemhar in there? Oh, uh, we should. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw it. Oh, bare feet actually would be interesting. Don't know that they ever show their feet. Exactly. So we just make up something. <laughs> Just figure out whatever we can with the options we got. Yeah. Kabali doesn't look too bad uh, for the lower pants. Yeah, I, I do like the look of that with the um, temporal boots. Did you look at the Voth one? Because I wouldn't... Well, I guess it's not quite uh, loose-fitting enough. Never mind. Why was there a shorts Terran two, but browner. not a shorts Terran one? That's weird. Because these guys were conceived in the nineties. Uh, shorts Terran two though looks like the ones that Mirror Lita wears. They are. The nineties are a dark time for dark time for Star Trek fashion anyway. It was the. It did give us Pokemon and Power Rangers. Yeah, but it's it's basically the the point where uh, fashion went from something that was uh, cool to f something that was best ignored. <laughs> well, that's basically every preceding decade to the one you've been in. Well, <laughs> I don't know. All right, that's I mean, just kind of a recolored uh, temporal outfit. I I, I kind of like that. Just a. Recolor temporal jumpsuit. Yeah, 
I, I did like I did like it more for vibrant orange though, because I think now it just looks too much like a temporal jumpsuit. Mm. Play with the colors maybe a little bit more, or or you could put him in, you know, the armor with the same colors as you've got for the troopers. Yeah. So yeah, I was using um, alpha uh, for the armor set, and then for the color on the trooper, I did. Um, yeah, that that's sort of the high contrast. Um, yeah, I mean that would work too. Uh, the Herogen. Honestly, the the one thing that's bugging me about it is the collar. For some reason, you can, I, uh, I, you can put on a um, you kind of just do something over that. So either the security or the uh, Voss. Here is going to be the easiest recolor. What about the Terran Task Force? Like none of the armor bits. Yeah, that I think that works a little bit better with the collar. Terran Task Force stuff is um, actually uh, one quick thing. Dupli- duplicate the costume. Yeah, so you get the uh, correct color ballot. Yeah, I'm already ahead of you. <laughs> okay. More. <laughs> no, it's got to be more 90s. More 90s. Yes, beige. Beige. No, beige is 70s. The 90s were a. Uh, the- the neon, neons, and that's eighties. Oh, it's nineties too. Um, it's kind of like late eighties, early nineties was the um, the the neon. Because in the nineties, everybody was pink. in the nineties. Everybody was copying Blade Runner from the eighties. Well, and actually, they still are. <laughs> well, the most interesting thing was uh, when people. Uh, <laughs> developed those ridiculously bright uh, color pigments that they could use on everything. So people decided they wanted to be like eye blindingly bright just because they can. Especially like it just, I just remember just that, especially on rain jackets. Now, to be honest though, for raincoats, uh, wanting to have it brightly colored actually makes sense. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's like, People like we're walking down the street with their like regular everyday clothes like neon fuchsia or something. Now we're just in dull, depressing. <laughs> I mean, you walk down the street in Chicago and it's basically everyone's wearing black overcoat. So mm. a little, a little uh, post or uh, a little dysto- uh, dystopian there. Just another clue that we're stuck in the Matrix. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that that could like I'm just thinking neon green for some of the um, miscellaneous panels on the uh, Terran Task Force armor, but <laughs> be pretty good. All right, so I need to play around with the uh, colors a bit more, Which but I'm fine. actually liking the uh... yeah. It kind of goes like the mm-hmm. that that chest panel kind of goes with a head. I do like that one. Yeah. It, like maybe it like it's a bit more of an updated version of it because I mean let's face it, it the... zoom, zoomed out like this where you've got it kind of matched to his skin color he he looks like maybe he's naked. <laughs> well yeah that's why I need to change the color. Yeah. <laughs> I need I need to find Unless a slightly more muted that, version you know, of maybe that of beige. Maybe that is what Vorgons look like. <laughs> <laughs> he's been drink wrapped and that's it. I I just noticed Body something paint. that that that's utterly hilarious is that if you put the Lucari uh, boots. On a character that has shorts instead of pants, the character has, you know, what are like metal armor plated boots, which looks fine. But then you look up and you, they have knee pads that are apparently like glued to their knees or something. <laughs>
So Dragoon is now changing the colors so that we don't have to uh, have a MA rating for our Foundry mission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we single-handedly changed the ESRB rating of Stowe just with one Vorgon. <laughs> he was that dirty! <laughs> you can't believe the optional dialogue we wrote for that one. Oh man, I, I I I just realized that you can actually make the Lucari boots lemon yellow if you set the color option right. That is cool. The Lucari armor is very strange because it has what like some sort of dual color overlay. Hmm. Yeah, so they kind of like uh, blend in one to the other. Because uh, man, I had a heck of a time trying to because I, I I got a character who flies the Lucari ship. And so I got the armor, and I'm thinking, okay, I'll I'll make it look like you know the, the screenshots and and you know like um, what's her face's armor. But yeah, uh, getting getting those to market. Yeah, yeah, getting them to, to match was crazy. And it's I, and interesting I them because happy. with the boots, the metal plate parts are color two. I think is it color two or color one, whatever. Okay, the metal plate parts are color one. The actual like soft part of the boot is like, it's like you said, it's like a blended effect between color one and color two. And it's just like really, really strange. <laughs> yeah, for the uh, the belt, like just a miscellaneous kit belt would work out pretty well. Mm. So now now instead of being naked, he's got the um, the Superman suit from Man of Steel. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> no color to it. Wow, that must have been a terrible movie. It, oh, 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 wait, it, it's that basically the, the, the same one that that he had after. Well, actually, no, wait, no, no, no. That, that it's one from it's Man basically of... just your classic Superman suit, only with some contour and some details in it. Hmm. Oh, uh, and it was, oh, and it was just beige? The, just to be a little bit more spa- less spandex. Well, yeah, um, General Zod's was black. Yeah. Mm. It was uh, that would, you're talking about the new one, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, you can make the joke that they kind of took the color out of that movie. So might as well have yeah, been brown. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Makes his red cape stand out. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, it's actually well, something you can notice in Justice League is just the fact that it, it was sort of the original art style. If you go back to the production um, when it was the first director was very muted, but after um, they changed direction, um, the final product was much more vibrant. Mm. Because, yeah, I've John, actually not been able to see that yet. I, I was going to make make a joke about how it uh, looked like that uh, black and silver look that Superman sported briefly after he got killed by Doomsday. Apparently it's, it's what they dressed him in for his funeral or something stupid. I don't yeah. know. You can probably go back to some like some terrible mystery science theater movies for miscellaneous sci-fi and just find some type of miscellaneous trooper um, for a villain that just wore a bl- uh, brown jumpsuit. I'm thinking, actually, no, you can actually go back to one in particular. I think this may have been the Space Mutiny color scheme for Kargan's Rebel Forces. Hmm. <sighs> Why am I making a character yep. <laughs> wearing shorts and a tank top and trying to make it as um, lemon yellow as possible? I don't know. I was bored. I'm now just tweaking facial options on characters for 26th century. There's I a, gotta the, get this just right. The, 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 the thing with the lemon yellow thing, though, is that it's one of those things where it's like uh, with the um, uh winter coats where it's not a shade that you can actually just simply select you have to like tweak it so you so that you get a color that when combined with the inherent bias of the costume you're working with comes out looking lemon yellow um one quick thing on this current costume um so you've got the uh, color options for the uh, base jumpsuit. I'm just wondering if you want to make that sort of the center panel stand out a little bit. So just slightly. So it's like tweak it so it's just like one shade darker for the kind of the front torso part and then the um, 
uh, the, the corresponding lower section that also includes knee pads. I think it might be the first color choice. No, first or second. Yeah, share my screen so you're not like several seconds behind me. <laughs> okay. Oh, I did make it darker. Okay. Just kind of add a little bit more contrast to that. Yeah. Kind of going with the brown as a secondary color. Yeah, brown and secondary color I think works out pretty well. I'm th- yeah, I'm just thinking, oh, you know what? Um, make the, uh, or this kind of, I-, I wonder how this would look. Okay, so you know the, um, okay, so I'm just going to have to take a look at it. It's like the third or fourth option on the uh, Terran set. But yeah, just added a little bit more, uh, just one, like that, that brown. So it's going to be like the, the furthest orange. So let's see, Terran armor. And then it's the, I think it's the last one. Yeah, that one. Make that all the way brown. I want to see how this, uh, see how that one looks. It is kind of interesting that certain of the uh, outfit categories have one or two items in them and very little. Yeah. Well, it, it follows along with tailor options. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. it's just it's just one of those things where where you, you look at the uh, list of available options and you're like, huh, that's it, huh? Okay then. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, just on the um the the Terran. Uh, I like that for the boots. Yeah, so that that kind of bring connects them back to the uh, rest of the accessories. Yeah. This piece, I think, is pretty good. And it kind of keeps well, some of the lines the, uh, of the old one, but of the old style, mm-hmm. but kind of modernizes it and yeah. makes it more soldiery. Um, one quick thing um, to match the uh, that stripe on the lower. Um, third option in the upper um, Terran Task Force armor. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, upper body Terran okay. Task Force. Third uh, option. Uh, third color. Yeah, means. third color. So, okay. third color. Uh, move that. Okay, not that one. So, try a second. That one. Okay, make that dark black. What the? Uh, that one. Yeah, because that now matches the stripe he's got on the lower. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, I, did, 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 I, I just noticed something weird. There's a, a costume car- category for costume set Ithanite. But the uh, actual options in this costume category are the co- Bali costume, and not the actual Ithanite costume. Yeah. So if you're trying to match, yeah, orange works pretty well too. Um, I think just maybe lighten up the because the color palettes, palettes don't match. Lighten up the one on the upper body. Mm. Uh, okay. They're yeah, they're not using the same color palette, which makes it hard. Yeah. So just like one or two more. Yeah, one more is good. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Well, we're about at our time limit, gentlemen. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I did tweak the costume. But I, I'm liking where we're ending if, off. If you get Duncan going on costumes, he could go well for many, many, many hours. Well, yeah, my 26th century project I haven't built Bishon yet, but my costume roster is getting towards full. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be honest, though, is that I have spent many, many hours uh, working on costumes myself. Oh, yeah. There are just so many things where you look at it, it's like, huh. Also, I just realized that Tholian silk robes. And lighting 2.0 are going to be uh, highly amusing. Um, they're, I, I've been using those a lot. Um, you noticed it, but it's not like ridiculous. So it's not like you get all of a sudden you get a disco ball in the center of the room just because you got an NPC wearing it. Although that would be funny. I am expecting from just from looking at it that it's going to be much like uh, with the like metal armor plate where. Most of the time, it doesn't look all that odd until you get to like just the right lighting, and suddenly it reflects a color that's not part of your costume. Um, it doesn't like reflect the room, but you'll just notice the color stand out a lot more on that one. See, that one. Okay. So anyway, we got to finish up. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs>
So, we can be reached by email at foundryroundtable at live.com. We are also on Twitter at foundryroundtab. Jorgen can be reached at jorgen1701. Duncan can be reached at gorgonops underscore SSF. Mark can be reached at MAR Huckman. And I, of course, can be reached... If I choose not to ignore you. (laughs) He might be reachable there. (laughs) 50-50 chance. It's like (laughs) 2080. Uh, and I, of course, can be reached at Green Dragoon. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. And uh, we're obviously going to continue building this intro mission and uh, encourage everybody to uh, see if you want to join the challenge, the mission building challenge. Uh, our f- post is over on the uh, official Stowe forums. Yeah. Um, but uh, until next time, we will say goodnight. Good night. Good night.